Hey, what's up guys? Mikey here. Something I love on a nice relaxing day is a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. My favorite jelly is grape jelly, but I wish that they made blue jelly because I would kill to try that. Mr. Krabs is SpongeBob's boss at the Krusty Krab and an extremely greedy guy. Even though Plankton is the primary antagonist of the show, Steven Hillenburg always intended on Mr. Krabs being the secondary antagonist. He's had some villainous actions in every season of the show, but his greedy side was really amplified in the seasons after the SpongeBob SquarePants movie. Sometimes he'd go to the length of caring more about money than his customers or employees. Despite that, there's an episode rather early on that really sets up his villainous side that will only get worse as the series goes on. No, that one doesn't have a song. Jellyfish Hunter is the episode where Spongebob puts jellyfish jelly on a Krabby Patty and the customers like it, so Mr. Krabs has Spongebob catch more jellyfish and Mr. Krabs enslaves them. This episode aired on September 28, 2001 and is one of the rare times we see a jellyfish in a different color than the usual pink jellyfish we see. This being the famous blue jellyfish, No Name, which would later be named at the end of the episode, To Friend. Sorry about the spoilers. This episode is, in my opinion, the episode that ends up making Mr. Krabs a worse and worse character as the series goes on. And I don't mean he's completely unfunny after this episode, but he becomes more greedy and evil in the future seasons. If anything, I'd say the first episode where Mr. Krabs was truly portrayed as a villain while not showing any remorse at all is episode 34, Arg, from season 1, where he tricks Spongebob and Patrick into thinking he has a real treasure map for a real treasure hunt and manipulates them with emotions when they were too tired to continue on with the treasure hunt. But if anything, that didn't really change him too badly. He still felt mostly consistent with every other episode after Arg up until this one. Or maybe I'm thinking too deep into this. So let's watch this episode and see how Mr. Krabs started to decline as a character starting here. So the episode starts up and the French narrator is talking about jellyfish living peacefully in jellyfish fields and the jellyfish hunter aka Spongebob comes up and catches a jellyfish and names it 12 e since it was the 12th jellyfish he caught that day. I don't know anybody with 12 kids but that's one way to give your child a unique name. He tickles the jellyfish and lets it go but then a blue jellyfish shows up. This is the one jellyfish in jellyfish fields that Spongebob hasn't caught or named at all, so he just calls it No Name. He's still calling it No Name, so doesn't that technically count as a name? Spongebob was still more determined than ever to catch No Name, no matter how much of a challenge it may be or how long it may take. Even when he fails, he still thinks he'll catch No Name someday. Later at the Krusty Krab, Spongebob goes on his lunch break and puts some jelly on his Krabby Patty. Fred notices this and asks Spongebob for some jelly. He shares and Fred thinks it's so amazing that he breaks out into song talking about the jelly and shares it with everybody in the Krusty Krab. Spongebob then tells Mr. Krabs he was sharing his jellyfish jelly with the customers. Mr. Krabs was pissed with Spongebob messing with the patty's formula in some way, but then changed his mind when Fred says he'll come back and have that for lunch every day for the rest of his life. That won't be good for his arteries. Mr. Krabs asks Spongebob to go get more jellyfish, and Spongebob agrees. Spongebob hands him a jellyfish he already had, but Mr. Krabs says they need even more jellyfish to feed everybody in Bikini Bottom. Spongebob agrees, but didn't know that Mr. Krabs had other plans for them. Spongebob went back to jellyfish fields and caught so many more jellyfish in a multitude of ways, but no matter how many jellyfish Spongebob caught, Mr. Krabs kept asking Spongebob to get more. Later that night, Spongebob had caught every jellyfish in the fields and was quite impressed with his work, but he didn't catch No Name. Of course he didn't. No Name followed Spongebob home, but hid whenever Spongebob turned around. Spongebob got nervous and ran home, but when he got home, he thought he was just working too hard. No Name called Spongebob and breathed over the phone, cut Spongebob's power line, and shows up as a shadow which Spongebob thinks is Gary. Spongebob sees a Krabby Patty in the kitchen which just so happens to have BLUE JELLY! I really want to see blue jelly in person. I don't know why Spongebob isn't excited about it. No Name shows up, catches Spongebob, and takes him to a factory that Spongebob has never seen before. Spongebob sees all the jellyfish inside and sees how they're all being brutally tortured for their jelly, even with the friendly tickles Spongebob did earlier, and is in even more shock when he finds out Mr. Krabs was in charge of hurting the jellyfish. 
so he goes inside and confronts Mr. Krabs about his bad actions, saying that these conditions are brutal for the jellyfish, even if it is for the jelly. He tried to set the jellyfish free, but Mr. Krabs says the door is voice activated, but accidentally says open, and the jellyfish are set free and zap Mr. Krabs. He leaves charred and decides to take jelly off the menu. He still had some jellyfish jelly, so he could have sold it in limited quantities until he ran out. Swanup still promised to use his net for catch and release, and no name flew into his net. Swanup decided to name him Friend, and Friend zapped his hand, and the episode ends. So that was Jellyfish Hunter, and oh boy, this is certainly an episode I have a lot to say about. First and foremost, I do still think this is a good episode. I have a lot of good things to say about it, but I'm going to rant about Mr. Krabs first because I want to get it out of the way. Earlier, I mentioned that this was the real turning point for Mr. Krabs as a character, his biggest act of greed or maliciousness in the series up to this point. Before this, Arg was his most evil act because he manipulated Spongebob and Patrick with emotions despite how clearly exhausted they were, wouldn't let them sleep in the tent at night, and made them do all the digging when they finally find the Flying Dutchman's treasure. After they dig it up, he refuses to let them keep the treasure despite everything he just put them through. His only comeuppance in this episode was when the Flying Dutchman appeared and gave Spongebob and Patrick a gold doubloon from the treasure and Mr. Krabs a plastic treasure chest, which was not what Krabs was trying to get. And even before all that happened, the action that initiated the treasure hunt in the first place was just him getting carried away with the treasure hunt board game. Even when he got carried away, he still acknowledged that he was carried away and apologized to Spongebob. Sorry for disturbing you, lad. But after this episode, for the most part, he still seemed to be the character he was for most of the season prior. Like in episode 36, Texas from season 1, when he cried upon hearing Sandy's sad song, or in episode 49, Imitation Krabs, when he casually forgives Spongebob for the misunderstanding that almost had Mr. Krabs eaten alive. In this episode, he's much worse. He makes Spongebob jellyfish on his own time and doesn't pay him, even though Spongebob didn't mind that. That's my life's dream! Well, keep dreaming. This will be on your time. And then again, he manipulates Spongebob to catch more jellyfish. Oh no! Don't tell me! You've stopped caring for the customer! Ah! And of course, he makes Spongebob catch every jellyfish in the field, but doesn't tell him anything that would happen beyond that. He finds out about the factory via the help of Friend. When Spongebob tries to confront Mr. Krabs, he tries to trick Spongebob that he wasn't doing what it looked like he was doing. And then when Mr. Krabs finally gets his comeuppance, he says this to Spongebob. I'm taking jelly off the menu. He didn't necessarily apologize to Spongebob for tricking him and making him do everything he did or for treating the jellyfish the way he did. He kind of learned his lesson about messing with wildlife because he never tried to do anything that involved torturing wild animals ever again. Of course, this isn't the worst action he's ever done in the series, but the worst of season 2 in my opinion, purely for the theme of animal cruelty. I know in real life the same things are done to cows for meat, but this is worse due to the way Mr. Krabs manipulated Spongebob, and we'll see how his actions have changed even a bit more subtly for the rest of season 2, and into season 3 before we get to season 4 and onwards. Even before he makes greedy plans, he's still unusually mean to Spongebob. When he gives Spongebob his 5 minute lunch break, look how angry he is here. Spongebob's his most loyal employee, why is he this mad over him taking a break? Sure, Spongebob didn't take a break without permission in episode 40, Hokey from season 1, and Mr. Krabs was understandably mad about that. He does give Spongebob a break in this episode, but I still think there's no real need for him to be this visibly angry over Spongebob taking a break, let alone for 4-5 to five minutes. He's also pissed when he sees that Spongebob added jelly to the patty, claiming he tampered with the formula. Messing with the patty's formula? That's mutiny! Why I oughta- It is Mr. Krabs' creation, and he can make rules about it if he wants, but clearly nothing was specified over Spongebob adding any kind of extra toppings to the Krabby Patty. Also, in this episode, he was furious when Spongebob added jelly to the patties, but he was not mad at all when Spongebob showed him the pretty patties in episode 51, Patty Hype from season 2. Because even here, Spongebob did technically mess with the patties formula because the food coloring he presumably added here was not there originally. This episode is the meanest Mr. Krabs has been in the series at this point, and for what? Spongebob taking a break? While I do think that Mr. Krabs still could have been worse in this episode, 
this still feels kind of mean-spirited. Okay, now I spent enough time talking about Mr. Krabs. Let's talk about the actual positives in this episode. I love the song that Fred sings in this episode. It's also fun to see that it's Fred singing the song instead of one of the main characters. I love the different ways Spongebob catches the jellyfish in this episode. Like the giant robot, the multiple nets attached to each other, etc. I also like the famous more crabs still in this episode, and Mr. Krabs' line about Squidward's records. Who's playing Squidward's records again? Another one of my favorite scenes from this episode is the scene where Spongebob was chasing after a friend when he still calls him No Name. The chase sequence is so action-packed and exciting, and just overall fun to watch. I also love how the tone changes in the second half of the episode. It starts to get dark, and the blue jellyfish starts to follow Spongebob. Spongebob feels like somebody's following him and starts to get scared. Then the blue jellyfish makes things more eerie by cutting Spongebob's power and appearing as a shadow creature. While we still know that it's the blue jellyfish causing this, we have no idea what he's going to do to Spongebob, and the music playing during this scene really makes it more tense. On my first watching as a kid, I really got scared when Spongebob wasn't sure what was going on, and then when he realized that Krabby Patty had blue jelly, and when the jellyfish captures him. I love when tension builds like that, and the music really helps with that feeling. I also like the look of the factory, and there were interesting ways of how they got the jelly from the jellyfish. I may not like bees, but this shot of the jellyfish in the garbage can is hard to watch from their perspective. And believe me, my dad, my cousin, and I all know how much stinging hurts. I remember one time, I put a little jelly on a hamburger for dinner when I was a kid. I liked it, but I soon got full, and nobody else wanted to finish it off for me. Not even my mom. I also like how Spongebob stands up to Mr. Krabs when he realizes what he's done instead of being cowardly and risking being fired. Sure, there are other times where he stood up to Mr. Krabs, but this is Spongebob also realizing that he was tricked. Even though he also tickled a little jellyfish, he still let it go, unlike Mr. Krabs. And even so, he still hasn't done this again. He learned his lesson about the jellyfish and promised to never do something like what he did again. It's a great character arc. So, while I'm not a huge fan of Mr. Krabs' mean-spiritedness in this episode, I don't think it ruins the episode as a whole. It still kind of works here, but I do feel it could have been toned down a bit. This episode still has a great song, some awesome action sequences, and good character arcs, and I really love when they're all done well. In my opinion, the highs outweighs the lows, and this episode is still enjoyable. Oh yeah, this line is funny too. I told you he was on to us! Jellyfish Hunter is a great episode. Even if Mr. Krabs is kind of mean-spirited here, I still think it works better here compared to other episodes with a mean-spirited tone. And the good song, character arcs, and action sequences are enough to redeem this episode. At least for me. But since I may never see blue jelly, I'm just going to take this piece of paper to the jelly jar and say it's blue jelly.